Okay. Uh, this meeting of the, uh, uh, sorry, this meeting of Economic Development and Employment Committee of the Brooklyn Heights Board 2 is called to order and is being recorded for public access and archiving in accordance with the New York order meeting law. It is the practice of CB2 to conduct remote meetings with all committee members' cameras on. We encourage public attendees to also leave their cameras on, particularly if you're given the floor to speak. All attendees, please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking. To maintain the appropriate discussion and voting process, I will make it known when and which topics are open for a comment by committee members, board members at large, and the general public. If you have questions that fall outside of the public comment time, please type your questions in the chat panel and we will address them if relevant to the matter. And as time permits, you may also email the district office at any time. We are committed to providing access for all of our neighbors, regardless of physical ability or limitations. If you require accommodation or assistance for full participation, please contact the district office 72 hours before any public meeting. Okay. Uh, the committee secretary, unfortunately, is not available. Uh, but uh, may I have, uh, Taya, can you do the roll call? No problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bill Flanoy. Yes, I am here. <laughs> Denise Peterson. We just had her. Denise Peterson? Present. She's Present. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine Gilman is unable to attend. Ron Cohen? Yep, I'm here. Lindsay Einhorn. Lindsay, no. Uh, Jessica Krejci? She's here. She's Hi, muted, but she's here. Clanita Medley. Mesha Morales. Here. Latrell Masso. Here. Celeste Staten. And Catherine Yearwood Young. Hi. Kate, hello. Okay, excellent. Okay, hello. thank you. Okay, uh, with this, okay, uh, we will now go to the meeting agenda. Um, let's see now, I uh, needed approval for the agenda. May I have a motion? Some okay, Kate okay, Yearwood and second. Denise. Okay, Denise Peterson, thank you. Okay, uh, tonight we're having a very short agenda. Uh, we're going to have a presentation today by the Brooklyn Navy Yard Development Corporation. Regina uh, Napoleon Lindsay is the Executive Director of Workforce Development, and she will give us an update on what's going on at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Regina? Yes, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, hello, mm -hmm. everyone. Good evening. Um, I wanted to just share some of the updates happening on the yard regarding this economic development and uh, employment, particularly around the impact that uh, COVID-19 has had on yard-based businesses and our efforts to help businesses weather the storm and our workforce development efforts. So I wanted to share a few updates and I'll start with kind of what we've been up to since uh, COVID has begun and how we've been kind of navigating. So many of you know or have heard that the yard has produced quite a bit of PPE um, especially during the height of the pandemic, about 10 million pieces of PPE and 26 gallons of, I'm sorry, 26,000 gallons of hand sanitizer, sanitizer has been produced in the yard. Um, and I'm going to go over quite a few data points. So if there's any more granular details anyone has, please feel free to stop me and, and ask for more detail or clarity. Um, and regarding PPP funding, um, as you know, there was a um, initial stimulus that went out to help small businesses and the yard was able to secure over $10 million for yard based businesses that um, was earmarked for specifically for yard based businesses with the average award amount being about um, $104,000 for each business. And those were via our partnerships with Goldman Sachs via pursuit lending and Carver National Bank. Um, the impact COVID-19 has had on yard-based businesses, um, there's only been about a handful of businesses that have left the yard with the vast majority of those um, being uh, those that were 
gearing up for retirement. Um, but we've had quite a bit of like weathering the storm efforts that we've had. Some of you have, may have noticed that there are masks being produced by yard based businesses being sold in Wegmans. I dropped a link for the holiday market. Actually, I don't think it. Um, it linked. let me just send that again. Um, but for our holiday market, there's about 33 yard businesses participating. Oh, someone dropped it in there for me. Thank you. Um, um, participating in that and all the products are being made on the yard by yard um, manufacturers. And additionally, we've had a, um, we did our first online art sale and a fundraiser for, it's, it was called Small Works for Big Change. And that ran from September 1st through October 31st and featured about 30 artists on the yard and they um, raised about $7,000 in direct sales to artists. Um, and I just wanted to kind of move on to some equity incubator. Is that okay to just keep going or did anyone? Just keep rolling. All right. Um, so we have um, an equity incubator. You may have seen some of that in, in, in news. We are currently have a RFEI or RFP for operator to lease and build out and operate um, the space on the yard. And the goal of this is just to lease space and to support an operator run incubator to accelerate um, specifically NWBE entrepreneurs and businesses. And so the link um, for that is also in the chat um, called Build a Future NYC there. Um, so you can take a look at that. And due to just a tremendous amount of interest, we've actually extended the deadline to respond to the RFP um, from this Friday, December 4th to January 15th. And I'm gonna kind of move into the workforce development space. So since, COVID began about March 15th. Um, the yard sent much of its operations, administrative operations remotely, including um, our um, workforce development efforts. So we've had about um, 471 hires, and that included some of the early hires that we had in, in Wegmans. Um, and 88% of those were Brooklyn residents, 30% were NYCHA residents, 23% um, were long-term unemployed, and about 18% were had been previously involved in the justice system. So still very mission focused on our hiring efforts. Um, 79 of those job seekers were specifically connected to jobs producing PPE on the yard, and that was from March through July. And um, in total, just to kind of aggregate our COVID numbers, about 100, 176 out of those 471 came during that period from March through July, with um, a little over half, 51% being permanent jobs. Um, additionally, just kind of since then, we start our fiscal year in July. So our efforts since July to now, I wanted to just share a little bit of what we've been up to there. We've had about 89 hires since July and um, our projected numbers probably through the end of the year would be about 216. So not quite as high as they've been previously, but still um, pretty strong during a um, pandemic. 83% um, of those so far are full-time jobs. There's an average wage of about $17, a little shy of $17, about 16.80. 80. Um, 93% of those um, our Brooklyn residents with uh, about 60% being from our hyper local catchment area and 22% are NYCHA residents as far 29% uh, are long term unemployed and about 11% have been previously in job involved in the justice system. And I also just want to share some quick um, points on some of the new initiatives we're trying out. Um, so we started some workforce development training. We have two training programs that launched that will focus specifically on upskilling and advancing incumbent workers on the yard. We started with incumbent workers for two reasons. One, we think this is a great way to incentivize employers to upskill their current workforce and create on ramps to higher paying, higher skilled jobs. And also it leaves some room, if you will, for entry level opportunities so we can create room for those who have not yet received upskilling to have an entry level opportunity on the yard. Um, 
Those consist of two management training cohorts that lost for, um, launched for junior and senior managers. We're in our third week of training. Um, and we have participants from about nine companies and we also launch a CNC training in January that will have about eight participants um, so that we can observe social distancing. And then we also started um, an internship to employment pilot program um, and it's going to pilot in early 21. And we have 40 recent CUNY graduates and internships and they will continue into potential employment opportunities with a six month monthly wage subsidy by the yard. Um, and we're working with CUNY to scale the internship to employment to a citywide model that will be run by CUNY Central. Um, additionally, we have about 25 college students that will be in credit based internships beginning in the spring, well, the spring semester, so beginning in January. And some of you may be f um, familiar with the Brooklyn STEAM Center. It's the career and technical school, um, high school that operates on the yard. And um, they are currently operating in a full hybrid model um, from October, November, and now fully remote, but still offering work-based learning opportunities remotely with yard-based employers. I just wanted to share some of those. And if anyone wants any more granular details, please let me know. <laughs> Okay, uh, Regina, is that it? Is that your full report? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, that, that's it. I did. I felt like I was giving a lot of data, so I wanted to just slow down and see if there was anything that you wanted to ask any questions about, but happy to share more if you look. I, I got to be honest with you, Regina, this report was a lot better than I thought. I assumed that there would be job, <laughs> <laughs> I assumed there would be job losses. I didn't expect you to be hiring. And didn't expect you to be hiring so many people throughout the area, especially within the catchment area. Yeah. Okay. Did you? What was the? Uh, yeah, we've worked really, really hard to. Oh, I'm sorry. No. It's a delay. Oh. I apologize. Go ahead. No problem. <laughs> what was? Uh, did you have run into any problems as far as uh, hiring, employment, interviewing, things along those lines? Yes, we, we did have to figure out the remote um, style of being able to screen um, candidates for employers. Um, we, like you, have discovered issues with some technology versus others. Um, <laughs> and mm -hmm. so we, we figured out kind of the right ways. We are currently offering our information sessions, still offering it weekly. We're doing it remote. Um, and for those that don't have access to um, smartphones, tablets, computers, we are doing phone screenings to make sure that folks can still get enrolled. We were beginning to do on site screenings as well um, for those that really needed it. But um, with rising COVID numbers, we now stopped that as of last week so that we're back in a full remote um, uh, system. But it's worked well so far. We've had a little over 400 people still enroll. So our numbers have still been. Still, still been pretty good, not as high as they were. Some people are probably still adjusting to, you know, technology and not being able to just walk in, but um, pretty good, but still being able to connect to our kind of candidate pool. We also launched a newsletter that goes out bi-weekly um, to kind of help keep folks engaged with what's happening on the yard, what new opportunities so that they can directly apply to open roles. Okay, that's very good. Yeah, I was wondering how people would connect, uh, actually communicating with you if, in fact, they didn't have access to the internet or a, or a computer. Okay, so I was wondering how you were handling that. And it seems like you were doing very well, but now that in person interviewing is not going to occur, how do you think you continue to reach out to those individuals? Well, Frankly, we honestly just started doing on site training. Uh, we only had maybe 2 days of it, so it really wasn't an adjustment since March. We've been 100% remote with the exception of a couple of days. We've had a couple of mass hiring efforts and um, when the weather was warmer, we did that outside so that we can allow for social distancing. Use picnic tables so that it was 6 feet apart with um, our and you know, our staff sitting on 1 end and candidates on the other. And uh, more than willing to do that again, we're probably using one of our vacant spaces so that we can observe social distancing as well. We haven't had the need though, since most of our hiring efforts have not been mass. So we've been able to do one on one screenings either via, you know, virtually. I didn't want to plug any particular software, but um, mm -hmm. virtually or um, 
um, or over the phone and then be able to allow candidates to go on the yard to interview directly with employers. Now, the permanent job placements that you mentioned, what are the, uh, where are they involved, where are they located in? What, what specific fields? I'm, I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. Did you ask what, what fields the jobs what, are? Yes, exactly, for the permanent jobs. Cross sectors. Um, we've seen a rise, as you can expect, in um, traditional manufacturing. Um, so a lot of CNC work, um, which is made, which was part of the, you know, inspiration for starting our own kind of training for this, and we're piloting it with incumbent workers with the hopes that we can offer it to community as well. Um, we've seen um, production sewing go um, with an increase. We've seen a lot of increase in digital marketing and sales. So uh, across. Uh, a, a range of sectors. Okay, thank you. I'd like to remind everyone that if you do have cameras, please turn them on. Thank you. If you have the ability to do that. Okay, uh, any other questions from any committee members? I just want to just say uh, thank you to Regina and that um, the report uh, was well stated. And I'm glad to hear all the particulars um, and to know that, uh, you know, there are some things that are still functioning well uh, amidst uh, the place where we are now with the pandemic and everything. So um, I appreciate your being able to come on to share uh, that information with the committee because we love getting updates and we love good information that the community truly benefits from. Um, and, and so I, I, I can't appreciate, I, I can really appreciate it. So, so thank you so much uh, for that. My pleasure, my pleasure. I'll also um, put a link to our um, information sessions in the chat as well. Thank you so much. I see that quite a few links have been dropped. Um, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I'll put a link in there if it's not there already, but thank you guys for having me. No problem, thank you. Uh, also, you mentioned the newsletter. Uh, how exactly are you distribu distributing your newsletter, the bi-weekly newsletter? Oh, thanks. Um, so once candidates enroll and they, they participate in an information session, they're automatically um, signed up for our newsletter since they're part of our candidate community. So they receive that via email bi-weekly. Okay. Are you sending that also to the community board? I don't think so because it's currently only going to the candidate pool. But I'm happy to add you to the distribution list if you if if you'd like to be on that. I think you guys get the open opportunities, but not the um, the newsletter. But I can add you to that list. Yeah, I noticed that uh, apparently there are 17 uh, current openings uh, for jobs. Yeah, I might be. I, I well, I see that someone listed 13, so I don't know the exact number just yet, but I want to keep in mind that those are the roles that we are um, maybe more proactively recruiting for. There's always a, a few others that we, if we have already in our candidate pool, the first people we reach out to are those who um, applied. So, for instance, if we have a, a driver opportunity and we know that we have, you know, 50 drivers in our candidate pool. We don't necessarily advertise that to have more people enroll. We want to make sure we prioritize those folks who opted in so that they get first priority. And it's only when we think we've exhausted or um, businesses may want to see additional candidates with a certain skill set that we'll start to put those out. So we always encourage people to enroll so that they can learn about the opportunities first and we'll have an opportunity to be able to source them directly from our database. Okay. And you mentioned also the build a future. The RFP, that's, uh, that's what, January 15th is the deadline. Can you give a little more detail about that? Um, yes, yeah, so it, that's being uh, run by our development or the responses are going to our development team. But um, there is an email address inside that link, and I'll, I'll take that out and drop it in the chat as well. 
but there's an email address on the website. So to keep the process honest, I can't answer too many questions about it um, because it has to be a formal process. But um, in, in short, we're, we're, we're creating the um, an equity incubator because we'd like to be able to um, have um, kind of a, a a startup um, model similar to other incubators that are uh, on the yard and off the yard that will help grow particularly MWBE businesses. And so we're currently mm -hmm. right now looking for someone to operate that on the yard. Okay, thank you. That's that's the detail I wanted. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, any other questions from any of the committee members or board members? Hi, this is Patrol. I have a question. Sure. First, mm -hmm. your presentation was beautiful. Thank you for covering everything. Um, oh, I wanted to know, are the jobs limited only to the Brooklyn Navy Yard? Um, well, yes and no. We do help support some of the very local businesses. So we've had um, businesses like in, in Dumbo or, you know, Fort Greene area reach out and we will support, but we do primarily try to focus on the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So I would say about 99% of the businesses that we support hiring efforts for are yard based. And that's both just from our own internal capacity and also trying to make sure that the economic opportunity on the yard is what we're focused on connecting to, you know, the communities outside of it. Also, is there a waiting list for the people to apply for, for you for the outreach for jobs for individuals? Not a waiting list, no, um, but w w we don't guarantee um, placement, right? Because the businesses ultimately still make the hiring decisions. We act sort of as a business intermediary. Our team kind of gets to know the business. We have a home court advantage, if you will, because we get to kind of get to know them and go in their businesses. So we'll know if there's an office cat or, you know, if if uh, someone is looking for a jack of all trades and that may not be quite listed in the um, description. So we try to help candidates prepare for those conversations. We can't guarantee them, but we do um, guarantee that if you're in our candidate data pool, you're the first ones we go looking for. We offer resume um, workshops, writing workshops, and we're doing that virtually. So if we feel like a candidate's resume is not really advertising their skills best or leveraging their skills, then we'll help them try to create a new one if they like to opt in so that we can create a better marketing material. Um, even if you're not going to go for a job on the yard, at least you have a better, you know, marketing tool for jobs outside the yard. So we do what we can to make sure that every person that we put in front of a business is job ready and every person that registers with us one. is. I saw you walk by oh, before. Is, no, uh, excuse me. Hello, uh, there's someone who's not muted, who's currently talking. Could you please mute yourself? Thank you. And I have okay. one more question. Um, do y'all sure. follow the progress of the individuals when y'all hire them, like to keep track of them and their growth, et cetera? Not quite the same way a lot of traditional workforce development agencies do because we're not, we don't have like case managers, but we do retention checks. So um, at milestones, we track, we reach out to candidates at three, uh, six, in 12 months to see how their job is progressing, if they're still on the job, if they're not in the job, have they found other employment? Would they like us to, if they're not in that job? Or even if they are, if it's not maybe going as planned, could we, um, you know, would they like us to still share new opportunities with them? Um, we have kind of acted as an intermediary or a mediator if things are not going well to give people um, kind of coaching on how to navigate or in some cases speak to businesses if we feel like there's something that's been miscommunicated. Um, so not quite traditionally, but we definitely do check, especially at those um, milestone marks to see how things are going. Thank you so much and thank you for your great presentation. My pleasure, thank you. Okay, any other questions for committee members or board members? So just have a, have a quick comment. I really appreciate you giving the, the percentages on disadvantaged communities that that you've been employed. Um, are there are, are you kind of at your goal, or are you trying to increase the share of of new hires that are, for instance, in in public housing or that have been involved in the criminal justice system? Are are, are you are you have you reached your goal, or are you trying to um, increase that number? 
A great question. So for our previous fiscal year, yes, we, we were at, um, at our goal, um, just to give you an idea for um, some of the areas where we still have some efforts to be made. We try to get at least 60% of our, or make sure at least 60% of our job opportunities are going to residents in our local catchment area. We're at 58% right now. Um, and our, our percentage of NYCHA residents that we try to make sure are employed is, is we're, our goal is 25% at least. We're at 22% right now. Um, but in other areas, we've exceeded. As you can imagine, unemployment rates are higher, but particularly long-term unemployed, our goal is about 15%. We're at 29%. Um, and previously, justice involved, we try to make sure that's at 10%. We're at 11% right now. So, great question. Thank you so much. And just an idea, we try to make sure 80% are full-time jobs. Like, it's really not our goal to get people temporary employment, and we're at 83% right now. So, we do still tr try to focus on job quality, which is like, does it offer health care? Is it long-term, not project-based, et cetera? So, there are some areas where we're, we're still you know, kind of chasing the carrot a bit, but um, other areas where we've been able to kind of double down and, and make a, you know, make up for some ground. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you for asking that question, Brian. Okay. Um, Regina, thank you very much. It was so good to hear something upbeat in a time where we have so much, uh, <laughs> we're hearing so much bad news in the, in the district. To hear someone that's actually, uh, Hiring, adding numbers, uh, it's, it's good news. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Regina, I'll probably get in touch with you a little bit later about some other details, but if you, you're more than welcome to stay you know, and listen to the rest of the, meeting, the committee meeting. Well, thank you. Thank you. I actually, I, I can stay on for a few more minutes, but I have to drop by seven, but thank you guys both for adding. I'm going to add a couple of the links I mentioned in the email address in the chat, And but if there's any other questions, feel free to send me a message. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, with that, we'll now move on to the uh, chairperson's report. Uh, my chairperson's report is going to be extremely short. Um, first off, what I want to do now is the committee members, uh, I want you all to focus on anything that you are interested in pursuing uh, within the parameters of our committee. I've asked a few uh, committee members already what they're interested in looking into uh, based on what's going on with, okay, the current. Okay, sorry, with the current uh, economic and employment uh, situation right now going on in our district. Uh, currently right now, we're probably going to see some things change once the actual uh, virus is starting to, uh, we start having the uh, people starting to get, um, well, we're probably going to see things break in March uh, going into June, okay, now that we have a vaccine. Uh, so, based on that, I'm expecting things to turn around basically starting in June. It would like to be nice. It would be nice if we could get ahead of that and actually start looking at possible things that we can do for individuals as they come back into the workforce and the economy in general. So, if anyone's interested in anything uh, at all within the district, uh, by all means, please let me know so we can start these, um, start actually setting up these uh, presentations beginning in January. Okay. Uh, and with that, also, I'd like to offer an opportunity for Denise Peterson to actually give us an update also. She sent out an uh, email, but um, Ms. Peterson, if you're still on, if you'd like to give us an update on the resource fair, I appreciate that. I am still on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Flanoy. So, um, I did send a little quick email out uh, today. So, for those who had the opportunity to read it, Tell you, I'm sorry, I meant to CC on CC you on that email and I will uh, forward it to you uh, tomorrow. So we're going to begin moving forward on the plans. And so we know that the plan means just that, that it's a plan. And the plan would have to um, coincide with. Um, what's happening at the time, but we're going to move uh, forward with the planning and we're going to be looking at the first and or second week in June. I did have a conversation with uh, Regina and uh, we agreed that that's probably a great uh, 
month to target. And we hope that some of the uh, pandemic matters are behind us to some degree that we can at least hold a, um, an employment and resource fair. Um, still uh, looking at if it's able to take place indoors, that it would be um, still under consideration to use the space that was sort of offered. If not, um, Regina brought up a good point and that maybe, depending on where we are at the time, that it could be something that can take place on an outside, you know, nicely laid out for an outside area since it would be um, a good temperature for the month of, for the month of June. Um, so I'm, I need to find out how those who was serving on the small group, um, the small grant, the, the small planning group um, that I can, you know, maybe link into some platform of sorts and, and we can talk through that as opposed to just on the phone or by email. If anyone uh, want, would like to start out with sending me some maybe new ideas or different ideas. Um, you know, we can um, have discussion, you know, about that. That would be great too. Um, and that's it. Any questions? So just to be clear, we want to first start off with a small group within the committee and possibly one or two people maybe one person else in the board who is interested in it. So this is basically limited to people with, with on the board, community board to uh, board. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Now, um, is there any questions in regards to this from any committee members or board members? I know some people are uh, who says please? I'm sorry. Oh, can you oh, hear okay. me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if I can be part of the planning committee, if it's possible. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that, but let me just double check. It should be a should be a very uh, we should be able to have you on board. It's not shouldn't be a problem. Right. right so that, it thanks. was it, that. I'm sorry, and that's fine, but, and it would, I guess, to depend on those who have sort of been on it from day one, what their interests are, because if they're still interested, then it could potentially be too many people on the small group part of it before it gets to the, the greater committee. Um, so we, we have to take a account on that to see um, Jessica, I know Ms. Yearwood is is working on some other specific uh, project for the community board and um, Latrell and uh, is, is is consistently interested. And so I guess you know whatever that number is for the small group, we will um, we will take a look at where that is and we'd be glad to have you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Um, we'd like to get this done as quickly as possible, and the timing would be perfect because, as I mentioned, uh, coming in June, we should be coming out of the COVID lockdown, and uh, the economy should be starting to pick back up. So the timing would be perfect if we can do it then. Okay. Uh, and that will be, that's my uh, chairperson's report. I wanted to keep this brief. I'm uh, looking forward going in January. And as far as December is concerned, uh, we're in the holidays right now. So I'd like to believe that everyone's looking forward to the holidays. Okay. Uh, is there any other business uh, to be discussed? Any new business that anyone wants to bring up? I wanted to, it's my Isha. How are you guys? I just Thanks, wanted Isha. to share something. Um, at last month's community general meeting, uh, I forgot their names, but the the ones who are developing the housing component of Atlantic Yards um, made a presentation last month, and I asked a question 
<clears throat> excuse me, about their hiring um, and, and how they're going about it, especially not just construct construction jobs because they're temporary, but with all this development going on there, like the permanent jobs, the, the maintenance and uh, you know, those types of things. And so they basically said that they were, I asked if they were working with any local organizations or the Navy Yard for local hiring. And they said the ones that are doing the hiring of 32 BJ. So mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if we could possibly have 32 BJ come and represent to us so that they can answer whether or not, as far as what are they doing? Excuse me, yeah. as far as the yards and the how and the, the jobs for our district. Yeah, yeah Ms. Morales, we did an outreach and that's not something that uh, uh, we're, it's not something that can be set up at the moment. It may be something we can do in the future, but at the moment we can't do that. I was gonna ask them to present to this meeting, uh, but unfortunately that was not something that could be done, but I did look into it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, no problem. I just uh, anything else? That. I just want to add to that, if I yes, uh, Ms. Morales and I talked about that as well, and so I think that what has happened or stated during that presentation is what happens at a lot of some of these construction sites. The workers that were hired or or was hired or could be hired. Um, sometimes there is some collaboration with the union that they would come through 32 BJ or they would be union. So a lot of technical stuff there, a union, um, workers that are already in 32 BJ, um, or those workers who get to be employed outside of 32 BJ, but then join 32 BJ makes it appear as though it's a quote 32 BJ project maybe. And so I think that we may want to go back to the presenter um, from last month and say, well, that's not exactly how it works. So who can speak to us about it? Is it the Empire State Development Corporation? It just seems that somebody needs somebody should be positioned to come and and and, and address uh, that part, be it for Pacific Park or some other areas where development is is going on. That 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 entity that reported last month is connected to. We'll look into it. Yeah. To work into. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other business to discuss? Okay, um, we'll go to community Mr. forum. Mr. Flanoy, I think it might have just gotten buried. I just wanted to um, pay your attention in the chat box. That yes, I saw. Statement received from the 32 BJ. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, I saw that. Yes, I appreciate that. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there anything else as far as community forum? Does anyone want to speak? You have two or three minutes to do that. Just. Uh, if you can enter it in the chat, that'd be perfect. Uh, Mr. Mark S has a question. Uh, Mark, you have two minutes. And this is a comment, this is not a question. Oh, uh, hey there, can, uh, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, I was just wondering, I don't know if this was the right time to ask, but in regards to like the master plan, I know that that was included in the, um, the last email from the community board uh, showcasing like the three properties that are uh, being added to the, to the yard in terms of like office space and, and so on. Uh, I was wondering if someone had more information on that, like, um, like what the timeline is uh, is as to when they want to start construction and uh, if there's, you know, going to be parking and just more public space added to it. And uh, if there's anything else that could be added to the, the, the Navy Yard, I know that there's a space um, or I guess there's a lot next to like the, the Naval Cemetery where, um, you know, there is a small walkway, but I was wondering if uh, there could be like a, a larger park 
added to that as well. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I, I hear Mark. Uh, as far as that's concerned, we don't we don't have an update as of yet for that. Uh, when I do have an update, I will let the uh, let the public know and also let the committee know, and we'll make an announcement. But uh, there were no updates to be given for that. Gotcha. So there, it, uh, I'm guessing this was just added to show that like the the Navy Yard is still interested in in doing it, and that you know, I guess they're. Um, oh, okay, I see somebody updated something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, just click on the link bar and you'll get your information you need. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Any other community forum, any other individuals who want to speak to the community forum? Okay. Uh, if not, then we'll just move on with the agenda. Uh, next, I uh, hope everyone got a chance to read the minutes from last month. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes that we need to add? Ron, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Okay, no problem. Uh, if there's no corrections, then I'm going to assume that uh, we can approve the, the minutes by consent. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, we're now at 651. I will accept a motion to adjourn. And so moved. Okay, that's Ron Cohen. Second, Ms. Yearwood. <laughs> okay. With that, uh, I want to wish everyone a happy, safe holiday. And I will see you in the new year. <laughs> happy holidays, yes. everyone. 21. Happy yes. holidays.